to Dr. Abul Hassan and Dr. Raghu and all of this who are in the organizing team. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, uh, we have heard a lot from very experienced vice chancellors, leaders of IMA, professors. I think I'm, I'm a little different that I'm a clinician, uh, but into something that I do regularly, that is to teach people to pass MRCP exam. So this is one of those standard exams that happened throughout the world, and it is recognized. Although this is not a licensing exam, uh, but then it has its all similarity to what is next. So over the next 10 minutes, I will take you through why this exam is there and uh, and what is positive and what is negative. So most of the times the regulations and licensing exams of doctor happens because of economic pressures, political pressures, the geography and the demographic factors that affect. And as the countries develop, uh, over the last 20 years, we have had multiple uh, legislations coming into this uh, medical profession from your uh, CEA coming, then you have your Consumer Protection Act coming, we have regulations for how a medical college should be run, the MCA become, became an NMC and so many other regulations have been changing. This is just to increase the demands of accountability and assurance to the public and increase the trust in the public. So. Uh, that's why we are facing large scale examinations here and uh, other plus point of this whole thing is uh, if a standard is risen to the international level, so there are people who go across for medical training, there are people who move across to work in other countries, so it will help them plan exams and if it is recognized elsewhere, things will make it easy. So the basic requirement for a license exam would be to maintain minimum standards. Uh, it should be a straightforward exam and should have a transparent route. So this is how people plan licensing exam all through the world. Um, and when there's a licensing exam with certain standard, it is reassuring to the public that there's a certain safety level uh, that is maintained in the doctor's company. So you may not have uh, the best, best levels. It is a certain minimum standard that is maintained throughout so that all the people practice a certain minimal standard. And these exams should assess the, the basic uh, medical science knowledge and the clinical knowledge, assess clinical skills, and it also should man, um, and help assess patients' management skills. So uh, all the Western exams uh, assess the skills of managing patients as well. So currently, you all know, we go to various medical college after clearing the need, we go to various medical university, uh, four and a half years of training, and then we have a final exam. And after when you clear the final exam, you get a temporary registration certificate. And when you complete the one year of CRRA, you get your permanent registration certificate. So but the training in each medical college is varied. The standards that are established in each Medical colleges varied. So people who study abroad come here, do the FMG exam, and uh, then get through the process. It's a difficult exam because I think they are not used to our uh, methodology of teaching, and uh, they go through this. So the Medical Degrees Act that was started in 1916, so it is gone through, and the last act is come as an NMC Act that is now currently in place. So the proposed next has two steps as everyone has been speaking. So the first step has six papers, mostly MCQ based uh, learning there with from medicine, surgery, OG, pediatrics, ENT, ophthal, and a part of the applied part from the other subjects that come into here. It's going to be a computer based test according to the document that is given there. And it is going to be run by a commission or a authority or a body that is going to be recognized by the NMC. Uh, the second uh, uh, part is going to be practical clinical viva voce, and it's going to be again in medicine, surgery, OG, pediatrics, and uh, ENT, ophthal, and orthopedics. And it is going to be run by the state university or the institutions, and they are going to give uh, some certain guidelines regarding how to run this. So the first uh, part is going to be an MCQ based computer based thing and the second part is going to be practical face to face exam that has to go through this. Uh, 
what is the purpose of having next is it's going to be a single exam for multiple purposes. So instead of your final year exam, you go through next. In, for an eligibility for your pro, uh, provisional registration, you go through next. Uh, to get a license to practice after you have completed your MBBS, you have to have the next uh, cleared. So, and uh, then you have your admissions to your broad specialties, that's your PG instead of your need PG, it's going to be next. And the, there's a small line that is added as well. It's going to be, these scores could be used for employment, scholarships, and fellowships as deemed by the uh, National Medical Council. So I think I had noted this down. So it's going to be one exam that's going to serve multiple uh, purposes. And uh, the most similar exam that is held internationally is the US United States examination, uh, the USMLE. So in US, after people go through the schooling, they have to enter, enter uh, the medical school prerequisite. So there's an undergraduation course for four years where they are uh, supposed to take basic uh, uh, subjects that are uh, needed for qualification for the M MCAT. And uh, after going through that, they enter the medical school. And uh, the first two years in the US are usually uh, general medical education that is classroom based where they teach you the basic sciences part. And towards the end of two years, uh, people go through the USMLE uh, for the first two years. And in the third year, the uh, clinical uh, test, the step two starts and uh, people clear that. And then by the time they finish fourth year where they have specialty electives, they go into residency. So the step two is where you determine yourself to go into which kind of uh, this thing. And after you go through your residency, you have a board exam. That's also a computer-based exam. And the people, there are a few people who go into fellowship. So this is the most similar exam that has been happening. This is a computer-based exam that is three-part exam. So the step one here um, basically tests the basic parts of medicine. That's your anatomy, physiology, your uh, statistics, your uh, biochemistry, all those basic principles being tested in the first part. The second part is to know medical knowledge, skills, understanding the clinical sense. So there are clinical scenarios that are there. Then you have your medicine OG part getting there. And then there's a practical. So there's an MCQ based, uh, this thing, uh, I mean, the clinical part is happening. The step three is where you have uh, and the step two is needed for understanding, I mean, for uh, supervised. So someone who's uh, cleared step two is eligible, eligible for a supervised uh, uh, care. So that is like your CRRA. CRRA is where we have supervised care. So step three is where you are again tested. And once you clear this, you are eligible for an unsupervised medical practice. So this has been there in US since 1992, and it's going on through an evaluation phase and almost like one lakh students uh, graduate through this every year. So this is the most similar exam. But these kind of exams were in the first probably country to go start kind of this kind of exam was Canada. It was in 1912, where the Medical Council of Canada decided that they have uh, this kind of exam where currently it's a computer-based four-hour exam where 210 questions, multiple choices there. Then they have a three and a half hours, 38 case clinical decision-making exam. This is part one. And the part two is an OSCE exam where they have 10 cases and then you are examined. But over the last few years, people feel this examination is getting absolute and they are trying to change this. So this is one of the oldest exam. Uh, India has most of its origin from the United Kingdom, Kingdom, but currently United Kingdom, for people who studied in United Kingdom, there's no licensing exam. Although they go through a four-year uh, medical school, then they have something called a foundation year one and two. This is where uh, uh, it's like a house agency. Then they run through specialist training or a GP training, and some people go into core training. So. It, depending on that, after your foundation, they get into specialist training and then they become consultants. Uh, people from outside go through something called PLAB 
and this has part one and part two. Part one is uh, 180 single best answer questions that people go through. Uh, and uh, part two is where you have your OSCEs. There are 16 stations and they're all time bound exams where even your practical exam, it is eight plus two minutes and you have to finish 16 stations. And uh, once you clear PLAP, that is when people are trained outside, it they enter a level in the what we call our CRRI and there they call their foundation years around F1 and F2. Uh, so this is where they enter and then they go from there. Uh, so United Kingdom is also now con contemplating on a medical licensing exam for all students, that is people who are doing their medical schooling in UK, whether they do it in certain European Union countries, they are allowed to go and work in uh, the, uh, the UK without uh, going through the PLAB. But now it's going to be all international students. Everyone have to go through the UK. And it's going to be consisting of two parts. One is applied knowledge test and then a clinical professional skill assessment. So one is a computer-based MCQ test and the other one is where they are going to have this. Uh, my uh, interaction with, I mean, my training of uh, most uh, people go into where we train people to get uh, into uh, MRCP exam. So MRCP is member of Royal College of Physicians. So, so this is not a qualifying exam, but uh, this exam was initially intended to get junior doctors work in the hierarchy in the UK where you can get good com competent doctors who are not liability and they have safe practice. So the exam consists of two parts. The part one where you have MCQ based for the basic sciences questions and those MCQs are, they include very few questions that in, involve recall and most of it is applied um, anatomy, applied physiology, applied pathology, all those things that happen and they try to give clinical scenarios and then you have to answer two, two MCQ parts and then when you go to part two, you have two papers. Part one is an MCQ, three paper MCQ based uh, questioning where it is more clinical oriented, where you have importance even to statistics, medical law, psychiatry, everything into the MCQ based questions where you have clinical scenario. And then you have a part B where it is spaces. So it's the practical, they have a five station exam where you have a time bound examination, six minutes for your clinical examination. Then there are uh, stations where you have to take history in front of two examiners, uh, where you have to go through a methodology and you, the conduct of the doctor is taken care, the patient welfare is being marked. And uh, then there are uh, communication scenarios where you have to break bad news, where you have to handle difficult patients, then where you have to handle where scenarios where there could be had, there could have been a me medical negligence. So all those things, the ethical part, the law part, clinical sciences, and your day-to-day -day practice becomes a part of the PACES exam. Uh, this is a very, um, I mean, it is one of the fair exams that people can go through because uh, the bias is very little and uh, it is quite structured. So even uh, the clinical cases that they have kept for the uh, paces are calibrated and they keep cases that are up to the stage where, uh, I mean, they don't keep uh, things that are uh, very difficult. So advantage of having a, a single I mean, a exit exam is there's a going to be a single exam for final year joining college licensing. So you don't have to keep reading again and again for an exam. Uh, trying to read for one exam, clearing it, concentrating on what you want to do, go ahead. This will definitely uh, maintain minimum standards uh, provided it is conducted in the way it, it is uh, thought forward. Uh, we, sh we will have a reliable and transparent valid measure of uh, passing the exam. So uh, if someone has to go through this and uh, the knowledge is tested in various capacities where uh, the, uh, I mean, recall and the all other parts have been distinct. I think it would be a distinct. And it gives a quality assurance for the medical quality. So if, if people 
from medical college or a university are trained to do this, the quality of the university. So the initial part why Canada came to this uh, ex exit exam was they wanted to improve the quality of their medical colleges and they have done so, so um, this thing. So this will address certain negatives in the current system. The challenges, um, so when there's standardization, people will forget to innovate. So their idea of just learning the basic uh, minimum required to pass uh, would be there. Uh, teaching would become more exam oriented than um, uh, having uh, people have a, a long discussion in depth may not be there certain times where we would like uh, having our uh, structure here. The large number of ca candidates that are going to get out of medical colleges would pose a challenge to maintain. I think the MCQ computer based part would uh, hold through. But when it comes to huge number of universities, medical colleges, uh, maintaining the standard in the part, uh, uh, the step two of the next exam would be, be a huge uh, um, challenge as I see, uh, because the teachers and everyone have to learn to standardize their uh, cases and the way they approach the exam. So it, it would be a big learning curve for the teachers as well. Uh, so, and then this may give a bias to certain medical college. So if someone joins a certain medical college, they are trained to clear next, those colleges may get a certain stratification. So the, all these colleges are good colleges to pass next. And these colleges may not be the best colleges to pass next. So there would be some stratifications that would come. Um, and this is going to be only a one time assessment. It's not going to be on ongoing assessment. So uh, I mean, how a medical student should be tested is ongoing assessment throughout his career and not probably a one time uh, test that could do this. So this could be one negative there. Uh, so the step two standardization I have uh, talked about and certain clinical skills like, okay, I think we can ask questions about uh, writing down a certificate, we could ask when someone could certify death or something. But when it comes to actually writing down a death certificate or when someone can check whether someone can do a basic suturing or put a basic vent flan, maybe these uh, uh, tests have to be improvised and uh, maybe we have to do a lot more. And to set up this exam, it is going to take a lot of time, maybe one, one and a half years uh, would be a very short time. Uh, there would be a lot of money. There would be a lot of resources that have to be spent because when people set an MCQ for the US MLE, the average time taken for an MCQ to go through the process is almost like 50 hours of uh, uh, constantly changing. So one MCQ takes 50 hours in a US MLE test. So it is, but I mean, after seeing COVID, COVID has taught us a lot of lessons. So, I mean, it was a new disease. All of us uh, were, uh, I mean, uh, stunned by it first. Then we reacted. I think India reacted the most appropriate way uh, because we, I think, have fared better than most of other countries. So we can take in challenges and uh, would probably take in more challenges and cause an uh, international standard. But the major uh, uh, difficulty that we would go through is when something becomes computer based, uh, it is going to be if there are four answers, there would be only one right answer. Uh, for example, for to, uh, treating COVID, I think each institute, each university, each hospital had its own uh, kind of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, protocol that went through. And they didn't have a, this thing. And each association, so the ID association gave one recommendation, the ICMR gave a recommendation.